communication was gone. Cell phones died, nothing worked. Without the ham radios, we were not able to um, communicate with our shelters because the phone lines are down. We weren't able to communicate with our other resources like FEMA and MEMA and the Office of Emergency Management. With no communication whatsoever, with all the systems down, uh, it was very important to Dr. O'Brien. Communications are extremely fragile and that tends to be our biggest issue. As soon as the wind died down just a little, I was up stringing antennas up on the roof. I immediately began to pass uh, uh, emergency traffic physicians, uh, nurses, uh, any state, bring your license. Uh, we need medical supplies, additional vaccines, uh, techniques. I was handling HF traffic, emergency traffic, and a lot of it. There were uh, requests for rescue. There were still people trapped uh, in dormitories at some of the universities in, uh, in New Orleans. Uh, I handled a lot of uh, emergency traffic there. That, uh, Yeah, let's face it, this is the greatest natural disaster we've had in the United States. It's really been an experience for me, and uh, I'm glad to help. I wound up uh, setting up in a uh, Walmart parking lot. I was receiving uh, traffic over the HF net, a lot of uh, search and rescue. People trapped in attics, uh, uh, people trapped on roofs. There was a woman in labor with serious complications, and uh, she was not going to make it if she didn't get out. They couldn't get a helicopter into that hospital. But, uh, the helicopter got into Tulane Hospital, and then they had a boat en route to uh, pick her up. And uh, we had her ready to go and, uh, and getting in the boat. She got out uh, safely and got into the chopper. That, that was a, a real heartwarming experience. Because I am from New Orleans, this region is a very deep and super important part of who I am had to do something. This is my first emergency as a ham radio operator. We put up an antenna at the Red Cross headquarters in Brookhaven, set them up with a radio base, moved down to Gulfport, did some work there, slept in a school. It's better than sitting home and watching it on TV. It's very difficult for me because I'm from New Orleans. I went ahead and got my ticket after 9-11 because I, I wanted to be of some use. I, I love the idea of talking on the radio to people on the other side of the planet who you, you've never seen. And, um, and so I, I did it so that I would be of use. And it's paid off. It's really paid off. It was such a relief to myself and Dr. Mahler and Dr. Brian to have, have Mike and uh, all those people out there that helped to communicate with him. Uh, it's definitely a, a definite, warm, uh, heartfelt thank you from, from me and from our staff. Without the ham operators, we really don't have a way to communicate. Now, I'd like to say to the ham operators that helped us with this hurricane that they have been a wonderful asset. They've always had a smile on their face, they work really long, hard hours, and they were there to support us in every way that they could. So I say a heartfelt thank you from the shelter members, from the staff, and also from the Red Cross. Cell phones, landline telephones, internet, email. Outside of that, what is there? I mean. If it's all down, it's down, and you know can't get at the airwaves via the ham operators, and you got there's no communication. Thanks, guys. Myself personally and the Red Cross truly, truly, truly offers their complete and wholehearted thanks. And I think the American people offer their thanks in that the people in this area are really appreciative of what their efforts are because, from what I understand, you're all doing this as full volunteers no recompense, you're paying your own way, um, and that goes really above and beyond anything that I have known before. So a very wonderful, heartfelt thanks, and keep coming back, and if there's anything that we can do for you guys, let us know.